I used to hate, I mean hate, Christmas music. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It used to just really piss me off every time it came on the radio. No kind, sir. Christmas is not always the hap happiest time of year for people. Sometimes it really, really sucks. <laughs> you see, when I was a kid, my parents, they split up not too long before the Christmas season began. And I can still remember that feeling. I can still feel that feeling deep inside my chest sometimes. That empty, devastated, depressed feeling that I felt on that first Christmas. That first Christmas where instead of having one united happy holidays as a family, I was forced to shuffle between two different Christmases and two different families for the first time. And while life moved on, that's what life does, right? Life moved on, and while I eventually adjusted to the new family dynamic, and while the years that followed were certainly filled with all kinds of joyous Christmas occasions and memories, it was the pain of that particular year, for some reason, that stuck. It just wouldn't let me go. So whenever Christmas music would come on the radio, it would just instantly trigger me, <laughs> and I would relive a lot of that pain. It would just resurface. And they say that time heals all wounds. I don't really buy that anymore. They also say that we get wiser with age. We're supposed to get wiser as we get older. But I've met a lot of folks uh, who certainly have gotten more immature <laughs> as they've gotten older. And I look at my own life and I think I'm dumber now than I was in some ways when I was younger. I don't think time itself is the remedy. I think it's what we decide to do with the time that we have. Like, that's what matters. We have to redeem the time as Paul says. And for me, it's all about finding joy in the minute little things, the little details of life. And this has been the realization that has redeemed Christmas, and yes, even Christmas music. Not all Christmas music, some of it's still terrible. But yes, it's helped redeem Christmas music for the most part for me. I found that God greets me in little things around the holidays. Like in the moment where I decide to share a bottle of bourbon with family members, not too much bourbon, but you know, like just the right amount of bourbon, <laughs> especially with my father-in-law, and we catch up. God greets me in the moment when I realize that after taking hours and hours and hours to prepare a grand Christmas feast, that my family members are going to destroy it <laughs> and demolish it in a matter of minutes and sometimes in a matter of seconds. God greets me in that moment where I just simply stand back and observe how weird my family really is, and how wonderful they truly are, and how special the gatherings that we have truly are. And God greets me in that realization that somebody out there loves me enough to spend their hard-earned money on me and buying me a gift for Christmas. And it may be a terrible gift, but at least they tried, right? And at least they were thinking of me. Where might God be waiting to greet you this holiday season? Where might previous pain, bottled up pain, be blinding you to God's presence in the here and in the now? There are many things that the Christian tradition teaches us about Christmas time and the meaning of it and Jesus is coming into the world. There's a little sig a significant little detail, I'll say, um, that we tend to overlook. And it's that God actually greets us in this, the little details that seem insignificant. I mean, if you think about the Christmas narrative, the Spirit of God manifested herself in a little baby born in a manger, according to the Gospels. And his children like to sing, Jesus was born in the little town of Bethlehem. And he was born into a small and seemingly insignificant and ordinary family. I mean, like, we don't really know anything about Joseph at all. And there's nothing special or particularly saintly about Mary. What made Mary so special was that she accepted the moment for what it was and treasured the moment in her heart for what it was. And she said the thing that is sometimes the hardest thing for us to say. Let it be. God enters our world over and over and over again through the small, the ordinary, and seemingly insignificant things of life. God is in the details. That's where we must look. In the Christmas story, it teaches us that Christmas wasn't a peculiar event at all, that first one. In many ways, there's nothing special about that first Christmas. As one old mystic has said, God is always needing to be born. 
if we have the eyes to see and we look around us, we'd see that all of life is pregnant with God's presence. We don't have to invite God in. God is like already here uh, in more ways than we can even fathom. All we have to learn how to do is to say what Mary said. God, let it be. Mm-hmm.